Released in March of 2015, Bot the Movie is a perfect storm of fear-mongering pseudoscience that utilizes the plight and suffering of real family tragedies to push a narrative of suspicion and conspiracy. It is the intent of this video series to illustrate the glaring errors and pseudoscientific claims made by the people involved in this movie and to expose the dangerous rhetoric that is espoused by the creators and the people that they have brought on as experts. Bot is written and directed by Bobby Sheehan, and it's executive produced by Jeff Hayes, Dr. Tony Bark, Kelly Brogan, a holistic psychiatrist, Patrick Gentempo, a former chiropractor, Luis Habacus, Blair Hamrick, and Alan Jones. We have this lawyer talking about this unproven court case against Merck about vaccines. James Chestnut. Oh, hey, look, another chiropractor. While certain pharmaceutical industries stand to gain at the plight and suffering of poor, sick people, well, so do the people who make this film. As I've already shown, and I will continue to do so, these experts that they bring in are largely invested in this because they stand to gain from selling people an idea that really has no validity. They're just as predatory as pharmaceutical companies, they just have a smile instead of a faceless organization. Our next expert is Suzanne Humphreys, and we're going to have a lot of fun with her in the vaccine episode of this review. But for now, I'll sum it up as saying she's a medical doctor who drank the Kool-Aid, like everybody else, and started pushing homeopathy and alternative cures on people instead of traditional preventative medicine. As well, she's pretty famous for claiming that measles, mumps, whooping cough, perfectly harmless. Nobody ever gets damaged by that. Nobody. And as the movie continues to drift into the vaccine topic, we have Gail DeLong. You did two papers that I know of that are quite impressive, and one you won an award for, and that was on the conflict of interest financially in the industry, and the other one was on statistical analysis, making an association between vaccines and autism. The CDC and the American Academy of Pediatrics have come out with statements, especially statements in the last year, stating that the link between autism and vaccines has been debunked. It's been disproved. I mean, how is your research different from their research? They have so many conflicts of interest. We took pictures starting uh, in year 2000. Between the ages of two and three, we see Flora losing her smile, her not right. only eye contact, the affect. Absolutely. The... Wow. So you were still vaccinating both of them? Yes. Gail is famous for being an associate professor of finances who use some shit terrible analytical skills to try and lend credence to this idea that vaccine rates and autism rates are somehow correlated together. She also claimed at one point that autism caused her breast cancer, even though she doesn't have autism, but her kids do. So I guess she caught breast cancer from her kids. We'll get back to her, as well as our notorious next speaker, Barbara Lowe Fisher a mommy blogger who co-wrote a book, again, pushing this idea of autism, vaccine, it's all connected, man. Atypically manipulating the immune system over and over again with the use of multiple vaccines in the early developmental period and this chronic disease and disability epidemic. But after her, we start getting into some pretty big heavy hitters. Stephanie Seneff is an MIT computer programmer who <laughs> injected her absolute lack of any knowledge on immunology into this debate. I had been studying autism, and I also started studying vaccines because I figured vaccines, I mean, a lot of people have said vaccines might be related. Seneff wrote computer programs analyzing the autism rates and then spurred on the public panic by claiming that soon half the world's children will all be autistic. That's right, 50% of all kids are gonna be autistic. She's a... She's a special brand of loony. If you project from the growth of autism over the last six years, you can figure that about half the kids are going to have autism by the quarter century mark. There's a bit here that gets into the corruption of finances, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But first, we go to Patricia Finn. You're telling me that most states in this country say that you don't have a choice for a medical procedure? Yes, that is the case. Finn is a lawyer who specifically defends parents so they have a choice whether or not to vaccinate their kids or not. Now, a lawyer whose very profession, her very livelihood is based upon pushing this narrative that we're, we're being shoved down our throats in this film, if that isn't a massive conflict of interest, I don't really know what is. Another notorious anti-vaccine lawyer interviewed for this film is Mary Holland. 
But what's interesting about Holland, and we'll get to her claims when we get to the vaccine episode, of course, is she's actually the co-author of Vaccine Epidemic, written with Luis Habacus. Yes, that's right, Luis Habacus from episode one. And just as a grossly, grossly misrepresented the vaccine debate, here comes Patrick Gentempo to segue us into the GMO discussion. There is more attention being brought to vaccines, to pharmaceuticals, to GMOs. It's being driven by parents, moms especially, and it's across the board. Again, the common thread, what's going into my child's body? I mean, what parent can't want to take responsibility for that and say, I want to decide? And the first one up on our roster is Kathleen Halal. Halal is one of the founders of Moms Across America, a reactionary fear-mongering group led by her and Zen Honeycutt to try and push this narrative of dangers in GMOs. When I really started looking into GMOs, like technically how they're farmed, I was horrified and I was motivated to go out and tell people. And you could tell Kathleen is kind of the shrewd brains behind the operation, whereas Zen is the figurehead to try and scare all the mommies into believing their quackery. He said, Mom, I wish all my allergies could go away. And the voice in my head said, well, what if there is something that I can do about this? What if he doesn't have to live with this for the rest of his life? And not only is their association closely tied to the Organic Consumers Association, but also to Harrington Investments. They routinely spread massive amounts of propaganda and pseudoscience, even going so far as to send out tests to do research with volunteers to test their urine for glyphosate. Now I can make an entire video on how this grossly misrepresents how science research actually works and how it's done. But I'll sum it up as this. When you intentionally design a study and then you send those tests, you're not even doing the tests yourself, you send the tests to people that you've already brainwashed into believing your particular brand of lunacy, and then they send you back these results, and there's no quality assurance, nobody's checking to see if this is actually valid or these are uh, pure samples, or if there's a control group whatsoever. There's every reason for people to be suspicious of your results. To do otherwise is to basically invite somebody to just simply lie to you. Especially when you and your organization are in bed with so many financial interests, all of which stand to gain by finding these results. For example, some of those financial interests, I don't know, maybe uh, the makers of this film. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the weekly women's GMO free news. I'm Kathleen Halal, co-founder of Moms Cross America, and we have some amazing guests today. Uh, Bobby Sheehan, the director of the new movie Bot, and Jeff Hayes, the producer of the new movie Bot. Now I'll spend a good amount of time in the GMO episode of this review de detailing out all the problems with their claims. Next, they talk to some babbling anti-GMO activists, and then a Nancy Weiser, a wellness coach. My feelings on GMOs can really be summed up in one word, which is unknown. We do not know what are the long-term effects on humans and the environment. Her educational accomplishments are degrees in international relations, French literature, and a master's in marketing. Obviously the right kind of person to be telling you how to eat healthy. And just like that, we get the queen of food fear, Vani Hari, a.k.a. the Food Babe. This clownish personality is renowned and even feared because she'll attack certain companies, because she'll read an ingredient label, find something that she can't really pronounce, and then, ooh, it must be bad for you. Now, I've talked about the Food Babe before, but as has a lot of other brilliant, wonderful people in articles, videos, and Coven Cinepathy, who's wonderful, has written an entire book exposing how much the food babe is full of shit. But we're gonna get more into her claims in the GMO episode. But my God, this woman is just such a shining example of what you can do with a scary message and a really good PR team. Our next experts are the Caltons, Jason and Mira. I mean, in these really small amounts, does it really matter? Does it matter for my health? Does it matter for you know my kid's health? Well, first of all, think about how small your child is. This little thing that might not be a lot to you is a lot bigger to your child's digestive tract that isn't fully functioning at the same level that yours is yet. I'd like to share this with you from their website. Wow, look at all those acronyms. In the film, they're listed as integrative medicine and nutritionist. 
But the problem here is that integrative medicine does not mean Jason is a doctor. He's not a doctor because integrative medicine just means holistic or alternative medicines. And you can get yourself a nutritionist certificate in less time than it takes to finish one term at a community college. So that moment when Tony Bark asked them a question about her health, she might as well be asking a homeless teenager a question about her finances. These are people who literally make a living purely on pretending that they have a type of expertise that they do not. And after the ridiculous Caltons, we have Mark Castell, the co-founder of the Cornucopia Institute. Think of them as not farmers trying to tell farmers how they should farm. The biotechnology industry, Monsanto and others, actually have in their contracts with farmers a technology agreement that prohibits the farmers from using any of their crop for research. Honestly, I don't really have that much to say about Mark, so instead we'll just refute his arguments when we get to the GMO episode of this review. And then there's Les Berenson, and this one confused me because after having graduated from Tulane with a medical degree, he did actually work in the private sector as a doctor, but then around somewhere in the 2000s, he decided that he would abandon his otherwise clinical medical education in favor of selling supplements and trying to push homeopathy. He's currently one of the directors of GMO Free Washington. And then we have a Zeke Freeman. Now, why they decided to give him a centralized interview when he is not an expert in any way, I have no idea. Honestly, I think it was kind of a bad call on the part of the filmmakers. You see, Zeke here, he's a chef, and he owns a company that sells honey. But part of the whole marketing of his company, of the honey that he sells, is an organic, green, eco-friendly, non-GMO, non-synthetic pesticides sort of manner. They even have a Save the Bees campaign, all to try and push this idea that they're this altruistic company that absolutely cares about the environment. Which in all reality, maybe they do. Maybe they do. But it is shameless pandering when we've already had an hour worth of shameless pandering all by people who stand to gain by this type of attitude. But then we have the curious case of Chen Shang Lu. My research interest is looking at how people exposed to pesticides and what would be the health effect as a result of the pesticide exposure. Now this one is frustrating because up to this point we have not spoken to one actual expert in a relevant field nor a currently practicing medical doctor up to this point. But Cheng Shang Lu is actually a real researcher. He works for a real university. Now Lu fell into some controversy because he published some findings which seemed to be somewhat accurate at first glance that there was a relation between colony collapse disorder and the use of neonicotinoids in 2006. Now, the problem with this is that all the other experts disagreed with him. All of them. Beekeepers disagreed with them. And as well, neonicotinoids were in use for 15 years prior to 2016, and there were no huge epidemics of colony collapse disorder. Now, his expert research does not account for this, but at the same time, this one little finding, this one little controversial paper, lend a credence, a kind of um, viability to this notion that neotinicnoids were the things that were killing all the bees. And this is still an ongoing research topic, and it's something that we're trying to figure out, but we'll get more in depth into that, into the next series of our episodes. And the next expert, which is, surprisingly enough, a real expert, is one Christian Krupke, an associate professor over at Purdue. Does the industry who make the neonicotinoids deny that this is contributing to colony collapse or the bees' death? There are claims that uh, there have been no documented effects, no scientific evidence that colony health is affected negatively by neonicotinoids. That's not true. There are many studies at the colony level that show negative effects. Now, I don't have anything negative to say about Professor Krupke. Instead, I'd like to actually examine, in a later episode, exactly what he says, as opposed to how it's edited, how it's cut, and the way they chose to put certain things in his interview so it seemed seamless, because I have a feeling that it's pushing a narrative that he did not necessarily say. And then they start to segue back into vaccines. The first person they talk to is a Don Loboro. She's a vaccine activist, which in no way confers any type of expertise or knowledge on the subject. We used to have this idea that we were protecting children from infectious diseases. 
and we created the National Vaccine Program with the children in mind. Now she's interesting because she's another one of those activists who seems to have ties to other people, notably Luis Habacus. The same Luis Habacus we were talking about earlier. Her and Luis Habacus helped to groom a man named Brian Hooker, who was instrumental in pushing a questioning of vaccines with the government. And they both have strange ties to the notorious Andrew Wakefield, the man who was discredited because he led this research, this fraudulent research, that showed that autism was caused by vaccines. And just like that, we're back to experts. Sheila Rothman, professor at Columbia of Sociomedical Sciences. And she starts off by talking about the HPV vaccine. Gardasil, I think, was $1.4 billion one year worth of sales. They're like any other big business, they want to make money. One of the ways they make money is through these blockbuster drugs. And they put a lot of money into developing them and an awful lot of money into marketing. But then right, right here, we have an issue. Now, we'll touch on this again, but the claim, the graphic that's put up by the filmmakers that HPV infections are cleared by the body is wildly, demonstrably false. Your body does not cure an HPV infection. In fact, once you have the HPV virus, it's in your body forever. All you can do is treat the symptoms. And this is something Professor Rothman probably would be disturbed to find was being pushed in the middle of her interview, but I could be wrong. Anyway, her statements, much like Krupke before, are very cleverly edited to say something that I don't think she was necessarily saying. What was it? What was it the filmmaker said? It was if we shoot 100 hours worth of material and we're trying to make, a, you know, a, a 90 minute, 100 minute movie, it, it's a very difficult selection process. I mean, if we interviewed a bunch of people that we were fighting to figure out, okay, well, how do we pull something out of this interview, make this person, you know, um, be, you know, be, be intelligent or be on point, you know, that's, that's actually easier to do. Ah, right. And then we have Diane Harper. I never have worked for Merck. I have always been an independent scientist. I did not develop the vaccine itself, but what I did do was provide advice to Merck about Gardasil in how do we test this vaccine in human beings to show whether or not it's efficacious. Dr. Harper is commonly misrepresented by anti-vaccine zealots, claiming that she is critical of the HPV vaccine, which is actually not even remotely the case. She has published in high-impact and very respected journals her support of HPV vaccines. But the movie doesn't show that. No, 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 no. Instead, they follow up with this horrible piece of human garbage. The Gardasil vaccine has a very large amount of aluminum in them. Aluminum causes a lot of neurological side effects, a lot of local side effects in terms of swelling, redness, injury at the arm where they get the injection. Ah, yes. Ten penny. I could make an entire video series on just how terrible this woman is. And not only is it shitty because of the things that she espouses, telling people dangerous pseudoscience, pushing them towards bad decisions towards their health while she hawks her books and her supplements and her DVDs, but the worst part is she does have the degree to back up what she's saying. She should be an expert. She's habitually caught on social media lying about her research papers, and she's kind of renowned for being dispassionate and putting people at risk. She's so notorious, she had to cancel her Australian tour, not because of the reason she stated that she felt threatened, but because after her event was canceled, no other venue seemed to want to rent to her. Our next specialist is Gary S. Goldman, and despite what they put on the screen, he's a computer researcher. He at one point did a paper with an independent researcher, Neil Z. Miller, called Infant mortality rates regressed against number of vaccine doses routinely given. Is there a biochemical or synergistic toxicity? Now what's amazing about this is not just that the paper is shit and it's been debunked thoroughly, it's that they were so fucking obvious about it. The National Vaccine Information Center, or NVIC, donated $2,500 towards the study. And guess who started the NVIC? Barbara Lowe Fisher, the same Barbara Lowe Fisher we were talking about, adding yet another layer how interconnected this whole little shit show of a movie actually is. And then the film continues for about seven minutes with GMO labeling, and when they come back, hey, look, another chiropractor, yay! How much noise has to be created before they actually put their foot down and say, this has to stop. 
industry itself, the agricultural industry itself, will have to shift. Following this New Jersey backcracker, I wanted to add this little thing from an activist. The more people know about this, the more they will change their spending habits. They change, they start buying something different, all of a sudden you start changing the food system. Voting with our dollars is essential, and I think we need to keep growing that and teach people how to do that. Purchase the items that don't have GMOs in them. Purchase the organic products. Moms buy 85% of the groceries in the United States. You catch that? Money, baby. All about the money. So the activists and the various founders of Facebook groups ramble on and on and on, and then suddenly, another wild chiropractor appears. When you're being pulled on multiple directions, it's hard to keep your focus, and that's what's happened to America. We've gotten duped. A mother nature is a powerful force. Every time we interfere with it, we're gonna pay the consequences. Much like the rest of the wingnut backcrackers, Sportelli comes in making these broad, sweeping statements to try and wrap up and give some sort of validity to this clever editing chop job that we've just spent an hour and a half watching. We're paying the consequences with the autistic increase relative to vaccinations and immunizations. I think we're gonna pay the same kind of consequences with genetically modified foods. We haven't had enough time right now for the consequences of GMO to manifest themselves. It's a nice little tidying up to make sure that the audience knows exactly the kind of message that this movie has been crafting and that you should believe. But before it's over, we have this gem. Medications, including vaccines, are not all bad, but they're not all good. We need to bring up questions. We need to have science and data be the focus and get the money people out of the conversation. That's Tammy Maraglia, and she shows up earlier in the film, but we don't actually get her named until about this point in the film. I can only assume it's because she's, again, not a real medical doctor. She's an integrative, AKA bullshit specialist, whose other MD is in cosmetics. Not making this up. For fun, I went to her website, and lo and behold, there's a hormone quiz. Oh, goody. All right, so we are on Dr. Tammy MD's website, drtammy.com. And tired of feeling fine? Let me show you the way to feel fabulous. I don't know about you, but I want to feel fabulous. Number one, I have a hard time getting out of bed each morning. Uh, sometimes I crave salt or salty foods. Sometimes I'm under a lot of stress. Sometimes... I have difficulty sleeping. Sometimes, I have lost interest in sex. No. I feel more tired when resting than when active. What? What? The fuck does that even mean? I, sometimes. The other parts of my eyebrows are thinning or gone. What the fuck does that have to do with anything? I've gained body fat around my waist. Well, I am 34. I lack the energy that I once had. Well, I am 34. I have hot flashes or warm moments in my pants. I don't know, sometimes, I guess, whatever. My breasts have started to droop. Oh, yeah, I don't have boobies. Thank you for completing your quiz. View your results, fill out the form below. All right, your diagnosis. So let's see, according to this, I need to eat nutrient-dense foods because we have an epidemic of nutrient malnourishment. <laughs> okay. I need to eat, apparently, pumpkin seeds and oysters. Oh, you just gotta eat some oysters. It's good for your libido, darling. Exercise. I should exercise. Wow. Well, I mean, I wonder if I'd answered in a way and it would say, Nah, you don't need to exercise. You're fine, homie. It's cute. And then supplements. Oh, let's see. She recommends maca, whatever the fuck that is, 1,000 milligrams, and ashwagandha, 1,000 milligrams. These will increase your own testosterone production without any negative side effects. Testosterone <laughs> is truly the secret in anti-aging. Boosting your production is a safe way to harness this tool for your life. And then my next step is, of course, I need to get her book. So I guess uh, I need some testosterone? Hmm. Well, gosh, Dr. Tammy, both you and Tony Bark there sell supplements. And since you're financially invested, as with the rest of these shitheads in this movie... Get the money people out of the conversation you would be volunteering to take yourselves out of the conversation, right? Yeah, I didn't think so. So the credits roll and Jeff Hayes starts rambling. Thank you for watching Bot. For me, this was one of the most important films I've ever been involved in. I hope it was an important film for you. The only way this film is going to get out there is if people like you and I share the film and we're gonna ask you to do that on your social media. Oh, trust me. 
I'll be sharing it with people, Jeff Hayes. The reason that's important is this is a conversation that if we don't have it, it's being filled by people that are being paid to fill the conversation. Like everybody in this film? We need to make sure that there's an open space to have a dialogue, and that's the purpose of having this film out there and seen by as many people as possible. Jeff, what you're trying to do is not a dialogue, it's an echo chamber, okay? Be sure and register at our website, botmovie.com. We have lots of additional resources that we'll be sending out to you over the next few months. Share the film, and by all means, uh, feel free to buy as many DVDs as you want. Thank you for watching. Thank you for taking the time. No, no, no. Thank you for taking the time, Jeff Hayes. Without you, we wouldn't have this glorious, glorious testament to how fucked up people can be to try and make money off of pseudoscience and fear. And there you have it, Bot Movie Review Part 1, The Experts. Stay tuned to this channel. I will be releasing more as time goes on. Next, I think we're going to do the vaccine, maybe the GMO episode. We'll see how it goes. If you enjoyed this review, please consider hitting the like button. If you'd like to be notified of any videos that I release, consider hitting the subscribe button. If you'd like to support me in some way, I do have a Patreon page. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day.